Next up, let's take a look at the steering wheel settings here. So looking first and foremost, we've got our plus and minus buttons at the top here. These are going to be our paddle shifters, which let us determine what gear we're going to be in. So you can see there, there was a message on the screen. If there's ever a message on either screen, we're just going to press the OK button either side in order to get rid of it. So I'll open up the door to show you here. So as you can see, we've got vehicle on and the door ajar. So if we press the OK button here, that gets rid of that warning message on the screen. Looking off to, let's start off at the bottom here. So we've got our cruise control settings here. So the vehicle is equipped with adaptive cruise control. You can switch to manual cruise if you'd like to, but I guarantee once you actually figure out how the adaptive cruise works, you're never gonna wanna use auto cruise ever again. So once you get up to the cruising speed that you like, all you're gonna do is press this on button here. So the, the cruise control is on. Once you're at the speed that you'd like, you're going to press set. And then the plus or minus button lets you increase or decrease one kilometer or mile per hour at a time. A couple things to point out here as well. This is gonna control the distance that you are in front of the vehicle in front of you. So there are three individual settings there. You can cancel cruise control by pressing this button here. Now, if the lane keeping system is turned on, this button here is going to be our lane centering system. So that's gonna be the one that will automatically pull us right back into our lane and center us into our lane again. In order to turn the lane centering system on or off, just off to the driver's side here. So this stick here, there's a button that's gonna turn it on or off. So by pressing that button, I want you to watch the screen right there. We'll see. Let's see if I can focus in on that, there we go. So our lane keeping system is either, either on or off. We can tell it's on or off when those lanes go away or they're there. Back to our steering wheel for a second here. Off to the right side now, we've got our seek button. So if we're listening to an MP3 player, our phone, whatever the case may be, we can change between our different songs. We can change between radio stations using this button. If we get an incoming phone call, we can answer the call by pressing this button here. We can hang up by pressing this button here. If we wanna mute our audio, we can mute the audio by pressing this button, or we can turn the audio up or down here. So we're currently off right now, so turning the audio back on. And then we can mute it from here. This next one is going to be our voice command button, so that lets us navigate certain places if we'd like to. We can change the radio station by pressing this button as well. Moving up, as you can see, we do have two directional pads now. So let's start off the directional pad on the right-hand side here. That's obviously going to control the screen that's on the right-hand side there. So going up and down here, we can change between a couple different settings there. So entertainment is going to show us what station's currently playing, or we can change the stations by pressing that button as well. Off to the left here, so navigation, we can also look to see what our current navigation is. So we've got a little compass there. And then back and down, if the phone was connected, our phone would show up here. Off to the left hand stick now. This is where we get a little bit more intense. So in order to be able to reset the settings here, all we're going to do, let's focus in. We're just going to press and hold the OK button here. And that's going to reset our settings there. So we've got a few options here, pressing up and down. We've got our trip one, trip two. Pressing the left arrow key there, we've got a different display mode now. So we can choose between kilometers an hour, intelligent all-wheel drive, which is really, really neat to see what wheel is currently working. Or we can check to see our turbo settings there or how far we are until our tank is empty. And then from there, we've got our RPM counter, our fuel gauge off to the right-hand side there, along with our oil temperature, tire pressure, and then back to our speed as well. Pressing the left arrow key, we've got our fuel economy, or yeah, fuel economy, I should say. And let's press them and hold OK to reset that as well. And that's going to give you the average life. So obviously it's terrible right now, 99 liters per 100. That is very, very skewed just because I am parked right now. Next one is going to be our driver assist settings. So the blind spot system lets us know if anybody's under the blind spot on either side of the vehicle. You see that little guy? That's going to highlight orange if there's anybody in our blind spot. Cross traffic alert is a really, really cool system. Make sure you have it turned on. If you're backing up or if you're pulling forward and there's an, a vehicle that's coming perpendicular to yours, so it's coming from your left or your right and you don't see it, well, whether you see it or not, you're going to get an audible warning letting you know that there's a potential collision that's going to happen because there's an oncoming vehicle that the car has picked up. 
cruise control here it is set to adaptive as default if you prefer normal cruise control you can change it there i don't recommend using the normal cruise figure out how this stuff works it's really really cool once you get used to it Driver alert is going to be tied into the lane keeping system. So if you get too many alerts because you're veering into a lane without signaling, you will get an audible alert letting you know that you should probably rest. Lane keeping system, we've got a few options. Jumping into mode, we've got an alert and aid. We can go strictly aid or the alert. So the alert is going to be a shake on the steering wheel. The aid is going to recenter us and pull us back into our lane. And then the alert and the aid will do both. So it's going to pull you back into the center of the lane. And it's also going to give you a little bit of a steering wheel shake. So it's your personal preference there. From there, we can go to intensity. And let's see, we go to high. So I don't know if you saw that or heard that, but there was a little bit of a steering wheel shake that happened there. Jumping down, we've got our pre-collision assist with active braking and evasive steering. Keep this on. Really, really, really good system. If the vehicle senses that there's an oncoming collision, it's automatically going to pre-charge the brakes. If you don't react in time, it will actively brake for you. It'll automatically brake. If for whatever reason it can't get out of the way with evasive steering turned on, it's going to take over the steering wheel and it'll pull you out of the way automatically. From here, trailer sway control, on or off, and those are going to be our driver assist settings. Moving back, we've got some generic settings here now. And vehicle, so auto engine off. Again, we can turn that setting off here or back down off to the right-hand side in the center console. We've got our easy entry exit, on or off. Again, not using needing the key fob to pull that in or out. Lighting, we've got some options here, so adaptive we've got our auto high beams so I do recommend keeping the auto high beams on as well so it does work in tandem with our auto lights so our auto high beam is automatically going to turn the high beams on as necessary if you want to you can still pull in order to turn the high beams on temporarily but with auto high beams enabled it's automatically going to adjust the high beams it's going to turn them on it's going to dim them as necessary and then from here we've got our auto lamp delay so when the vehicle's turned off how long do those lamps stay on for our locks here so auto unlock we can change that if we want to so turning that on or off and oil life reset so whenever you change the oil out so we would reset the oil life there power lift gate so we can that switch that's outside of the vehicle in order to open it up we can either enable or disable that one remote start so remote start is the system on so as of right now yes it is climate control so with climate control on when we remote start the vehicle what happens with it auto it means that the vehicle is automatically going to adjust the cabin temperature to a comfortable level whereas last setting it's going to remember the last setting that the vehicle was in before you turned it off seats and wheel very straightforward is it automatically going to adjust the seat and the wheel for you when you've remote started and then duration of the remote start, 5, 10, or 15 minutes. So when the vehicle's remote started, how long does it stay on for? Moving down, we've got some options for windows. So windows we can remote open using the key fob. And wipers, so we've got our courtesy wipe and rain sensing as well. Courtesy wipe, I don't recommend having that one on, especially in the winter time, because if there's snow and ice in the windshield wipers, it could potentially damage the motor. But rain sensing, you absolutely want to keep on because it's automatically going to adjust the windshield wipers as necessary. You can control the speed using that right stick here. So we can drop down in order to turn it on once. Or, yeah, let's do this here. So as you can see, we're going, controlling the speed here. While we're on that stick here, so as you can see, we've also got the ability to control how much fluid comes out. And in order to have the fluid come out, we're going to pull towards us for the front. And then you're going to push the stick away for the back windshield wipers. Now, in order to turn the wipers on in the back there, as you can see, there's a little knob right back here. So we're going to press that button. We're going to go up one in order to be able to turn on the rear windshield wipers. back to our stick here so we're going to go down and there we go so those are the basics for the vehicle my key lets you set up certain settings for your individual key so that can be things like the vehicle can only go up to a certain speed or the radio won't come on unless the seatbelt's turned on so you can create my key through this setting here 
display setup. So we can again change some different options here. So between liters per hundred, we can go miles per gallon. Temperature, we can change again between Celsius or Fahrenheit. Change different displays, tire pressure, or our preferred language.